There are several different types of prints which could fall underneath the hood of relief printmaking, but for the purposes of this video I will focus specifically on woodcuts, uh, my inspirations, process, and methods for making them as well. One of these said inspirations would be the wonderfully executed and rendered designs by Hans Holbein for his 1522 uh, Dance of Death series. And they're just absolutely terrifying depiction. Um, you can see here the upper arm of death is composed of two bones, indicating the relative lack of understanding of basic anatomy at the time. And here is the master of the Northern Renaissance, Albrecht Dürer, with his just absolutely immaculate and unrivaled woodcuts of just such immense detail. And aside from his uh, Christian depictions, he uh, explored uh, more classical motifs. I personally find his uh, martyrdom of 10,000 to be one of his crowning achievements. Not necessarily in composition or balance, but in just absolute sheer amount of detail. Uh, compacted into just 11 by 15 inches. Another more relatively recent artist I admire is the wood engraver Paul Landeker and his beautifully rendered and soft forms uh, largely composed of just straight lines and it could be said that he in some ways popularized the uh, method of wood engraving from a working man's art to a fine art form. And many of his compositions are just full of beautiful light. Lind Ward is another artist I uh, admire. His uh, terrifying Art Deco nightmares for his wordless, textless novels, or I guess could be kind of a precursor to the modern day graphic novel. John J. Murphy had a really unique way of uh, angular, stylized cutting that I find appealing to. Pierre Vibert was a uh, French artist with a Another unique cutting style, a lot of vertical lines. With my own wood cutting work, I cut into MDF uh, type of fiberboard, and the cutting process is fairly simple. What you cut away will be revealed once printed as the white of the paper showing through, and what you leave is the black, the, the line work, the actual image itself, which will be stamped into the paper, either through the etching press or printing it by hand. But for the demonstration in this video, I'll be printing with an etching press. The first step I do is I uh, sketch out the image in pencil, and then I ink it in, preferably with uh, India ink, because Sharpie can kind of leave a purple iridescence, which kind of confuse my eye later on. And then I darken the block with screen printing ink, so when I cut, the lighter value of the, as you see here, the MDF, will show through, kind of allowing me to pre-visualize how the actual image will look on the paper. And you see here all the fine parallel lines that I'm making. I'm trying to stick with the curvature of the form below to not only indicate the value of the light hitting the branch in this case, but also the actual form and curvature of the surface of the object. So if you mix up the, the, the types of cuts that you do and the different techniques, you can kind of uh, also visualize different textures and uh, surfaces of light and atmospheric perspective and all these subtleties which are quite difficult to do in a woodcut but kind of provide an interesting challenge for me. And once the block is finished being cut, in this case uh, with this image is a couple weeks from the uh, initial drawing, I will go through and make sure that all the fine lines have uh, adequate valleys to make the actual inking process go a bit easier. And you see here I am spreading out some ink on some uh, glass, which I will uh, roll out with this brayer you see there. And um, you roll it out until it kind of reaches a nice fine consistency, you know. You don't really want an orange peel finish and you don't want it too thin. You want to listen for this uh, bacon frying sound I've heard. And um, then you carefully, I usually like choosing a brayer larger than the actual block so I don't dip down into the valleys and kind of ink what's not supposed to be ink. So. And also a border helps in this uh, regard. And here's the finished block and you can see everything is darkened and it's all caked up with thick black greasy ink. And then it's off to the etching press and uh, set the pressure to accommodate the size of the block and then 
you can actually start the uh, printing process. I'm glad the board says tough shan. Before printing on nice paper, I like to uh, proof the block initially just by printing with uh, printer paper or some shitty uh, newsprint or something just to kind of get a good judgment of how the printing process is going to go and uh, the blankets you see there uh, ensure that the paper won't shift and kind of dampens and evens out the pressure. Um, pulling away the blankets, the first uh, print I did on the newsprint turned out surprisingly well. The block was even inked and the pressure seemed to be set just about right. And um, I was confident after one or two more pulls on different types of lower grade paper to move on up to nicer toned printmaking paper, which is uh, BFK cream, or I'm not sure exactly what I was printing on here, but I put some registration marks down on the runner block and uh, using those as a guide to ensure that the uh, print would be near the center of the paper. Maybe not exactly, but close. Printing went pretty well. I think I got an addition of 20 or so out of this print, and they all printed fairly well. Um, some of the finer cuts were lost as they pooled with ink and weren't really able to be retrieved by uh, lightening the pressure or anything, and so it's kind of a balance between do I lose certain lines or do I have kind of a salty underinked print? But I kind of found a nice balance and I got a usable addition out of it. And the final image wasn't exactly what I'd planned, but the majority of my complaints weren't with the actual printing process or my printing abilities, it's the actual cutting on my part. Uh, not necessarily mistakes like slips or um, actual errors on the block, just poor judgments in cutting or things I wish I would have done differently. Another thing I've started doing recently is adapting the line work from these woodcuts into four or five color CMYK process uh, screen prints with uh, stochastic halftones uh, resulting in kind of uh, full color visualizations of how I intended the woodcuts to be in my mind. The previous woodcut which I've detailed in this video is actually a continuation of a two-part series of prints. Um, centered around a pond full of uh, symbolic imagery and uh, surrealistic details from nightmares and dreams I've had, also coupled with uh, a love of traditional printmaking. Here's a uh, Cicindella formosa, a tiger beetle. This is an auroch, which is the ancestor of modern day cattle. It's a relatively small woodcut. This is a pretty big woodcut, this is about a 24 inch print full sheet of a Phidibus audax male trimming spider. More imagery, probably born out of my interest in uh, artists like Hieronymus Bosch and Hans Holbein and Peter Bruegel. And also, of course, there's elements of my love of natural history. This piece was uh, uh, me getting all excited about Lewis Wayne, the potentially insane illustrator of cats, anthropomorphic cats. That's probably a Gustave Doré inspiration. This will obviously be a Hans Holbein knockoff in my style, which I adapted into a four color uh, CMYK process screen print. The uh, Jewish folklore character, Lilith, poisoning the water supply of a nearby town. Another thing I've, I haven't really touched on is um, linoleum cuts are a bit softer if you're wanting to get if you're interested in you know relief printmaking and they ink well and they have a nice smooth surface and without much pressure you can do nice prints and also they lend themselves to uh, reduction printmaking I've found quite well and uh, nice clean graphic cuts kind of a challenge for me so in conclusion to all this here's a uh, another two color uh, lino cut reduction I did of Megaloceros giganteus the uh, ill-fated Irish elk. So if you'd like to own a woodcut of your own or just look at what I'm doing, head on over to thomasshahan.com. Thanks.